One way to connect your security system to the cloud is with a VideoLoft cloud adapter, which can back up a local MVR or DVR or replace one completely. You just need to put this little bridge on the same network as your local security system, and you can watch our install videos to see how to get it all set up. Once it's connected, you can watch the camera live feeds and recorded video events from the VideoLoft mobile app, from a web browser, or a local monitor which is connected to the cloud adapter. So when you first log in to VideoLoft on a web browser, you see all of your cameras and you see their live feeds. When you hover over them, you've got their name and status, and you can also filter by status to just show the ones that are online or offline. You can filter by name. So this is the only camera with door in the name. And you can edit the layout. So you can hide cameras or you can change the order around and also change how many columns are shown in the grid. Viewing multiple cameras in the app is very similar to the web, but these are live streams. These are thumbnails, so still images that refresh whenever motion is detected. And there's three different viewing options up here. And finally, as well as being able to watch the camera feeds via the cloud through the VideoLoft app and web viewer, you can also watch them over the local network by a monitor that's connected to the cloud adapter by a micro HDMI cable. Then to view an individual camera, you just click on it. So the live feed is at the top and you can move around in that video. And here you've got all of the recorded video events. To play an event, you just tap it to play. You can download it to your camera roll or you can share it via email, text, WhatsApp. Each event has a duration and a motion score. The higher the number, the bigger the motion. And as well as scrolling through events on the timeline, you can filter them by date and by object detected. So here I can click on person to see the events that have only got people in them. You can also change the camera name up here by clicking the pencil icon. And for cameras that have PTZ controls, you can control those through the VideoLoft app as well. For cameras that support two-way audio, you can also talk through the app. Hello? And it's exactly the same in the web. So you click on the individual camera to view it, you can take the live feed full screen and then search back through the recorded events. To play them, just click them. You can download and delete. And you can select multiple at once to download in bulk or delete in bulk. And then when you're searching for something specific, you can do that by date and time. Or also, if you've got a video loft analytics plan, you can search by object detected. So that pulls up all events that have been found with people in them. So that shows all the events with people in from that specific camera. But an extra thing you can do in the web is search for events across all of your cameras in one go. To do that, just click on the events tab. And then here you can see events with people in across all of your cameras. There's loads of things you can control remotely in the camera settings. So I'll just talk about a few of the key ones. Here we've got recording mode. So by default, you'll be recording on motion. So only sending video to the cloud when motion is detected. But we can also support continuous 24 seven recording to the cloud as well. Video quality depends on the resolution of your camera. So we can take video to the cloud at standard definition, two, four, or eight megapixels. Then here we've got whether sounds being recorded if the camera has an inbuilt microphone, whether two-way audio is enabled if it's got an inbuilt speaker, PTZ controls. And here we get onto the motion detection. So you've got a sensitivity threshold if you move it down to one, it'll trigger on really small motion events. And moving it all the way up to 10, it will only trigger on big motion events. Then we've got detection zones and you can mask out certain areas of the screen by drawing over them if you don't want that area to trigger motion. 
You can receive motion alerts by push notification, email notification, or both. And you can set the trigger for those alerts to be general motion. So whenever motion is detected by the camera, you receive those alerts or analytics if you've got an analytics plan. So for this one, you can see I've got it set to analytics and my analytics alert rule for this camera is that I only want to receive alerts when people are detected in the video. And you can also set schedules for these alerts. So you might only want to receive the notifications outside of business hours or at the weekend or only during the night.